Hi, welcome to Pathways to Chemistry. This is Dr. O'Connor, and today we're going to learn how to name binary covalent compounds. First, we need to know there are two major divisions of compounds, covalent compounds and ionic compounds. Covalent compounds are composed of only nonmetal species, and here are some examples. We know that uh, nitrogen and oxygen and carbon and chlorine and sulfur are all nonmetals. So each one of these compounds is composed of only nonmetal atoms. Now, ionic compounds are composed of both a metal and a nonmetal species. Some examples are sodium chloride, magnesium oxide, sodium carbonate, and sodium hydroxide. Notice they, these all contain a metal atom with a nonmetal species. In this discussion, we will name binary covalent compounds. Binary covalent compounds are typically formed by the combination of two nonmetals. So let's take a look at how we name binary covalent compounds. First, we have a table here with prefixes. And these prefixes are used to indicate the number of atoms in the compound. So you need to memorize these. So for one atom, the prefix used is mono. Two atoms, di. Three atoms, tri. Four, tetra. Five atoms, penta. Six atoms, hexa. Seven atoms, hepta. Eight atoms, octa. Nine atoms, nana. And ten atoms, deca. So there are three rules in naming covalent compounds. Number one, never use the prefix mono in naming the first atom of a covalent compound. Number two, if an atom starts with a vowel, drop the vowel at the end of the prefix. Number three, modify the ending of the second atom to have an eyed ending. So, let's take a look at this compound here. Most of you are familiar with this, but we name this as carbon monoxide. So the first atom, according to rule number two, never gets the prefix mono. Okay, so we just go ahead and name it. And then in the second rule, it states if an atom starts with a vowel, drop the vowel at the end of the prefix, if the prefix has a vowel. Well, in this case, we have one oxygen atom, and the prefix is mono. Okay, so what we do is drop the O in the prefix and then just call this monoxide. And then, of course, the third rule, we modified the ending of oxygen, and we name it as oxide. So putting this all together, we have carbon monoxide. Let's go ahead and name a few others. Let's start with this first one. Um, here we have water. Everybody recognizes this one. There are two hydrogens, so we use the prefix di. So that would be dihydrogen. And then we have an oxygen, one oxygen atom. We use the prefix mono, drop the O because oxygen begins with a vowel, change the ending of oxygen to ide, so we have oxide, monoxide, so we have dihydrogen monoxide. That is the IUPAC name for water. Here we have a phosphorus atom and five chlorine atoms. So we can go ahead and name the first atom, which is phosphorus. There's only one of them. Again, we never use mono um, when naming the first atom. And then here we have five chlorine atoms. So five chlorines, the prefix for five is penta. And we change the ending in chlorine to, to ide, so it becomes chloride. So we have phosphorus penta chloride. Here we have two nitrogen atoms, so that would be a dinitrogen, and three oxygen atoms, and that would be trioxide, dinitrogen trioxide. Here we have two chlorine atoms and seven oxygens. So we have a dichlorine, and the prefix for seven is hepta. Again, we drop the A because uh, oxide begins with a vowel and we end up with dichlorine heptoxide. 